Hello everybody. I am Dr. Farhan Zameer, an adjunct professor and academic specialist at Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we will try to understand a very important concept on sequencing and their formats which are been available. So that how do I analyze data and what more can I do with the available data online? So let's dive in. So to start with, we will look into what are the, the databases which will provide me sequences. So these are called as sequence databases. Now first we need to understand what are the type of sequences which are available. Now rather than trying to pull the entire strings out, let me take a very simple example. Currently for today, we will have to discuss on two major kinds of sequences. One. It could be a protein sequence or it could be a nucleotide sequence. Okay, so when I talk about protein sequence, protein sequence, since we have already discussed on with our previous uh, videos that what exactly is protein and how exactly a protein uh, is been made. Okay, and what are the various architecture or conformations with the protein uh, that is quaternary, tertiary, secondary and primary. And when I'm talking about a sequence, the two very specifically a protein sequence, please remember I am talking upon the primary sequence of a protein. So here to be very clear, I am not talking on the secondary, tertiary or quaternary structures of a protein, but I am talking on a basic structure that is I am talking on the primary structure of a protein. Now the primary structure of the protein is made up of amino acids and this consortium of amino acids, this bondage, linkage of amino acid with an other amino acid will try to create a peptide and this peptide together will create a polypeptide and this polypeptide all together will create a protein. But how do I analyze the primary structure? And before I analyze, I need to understand what are the various formats which have been available. So for today, we will look upon what are the formats for proteins and what are the formats which have been available for a nucleotide. So the major emphasis would be towards protein because once you understand the protein component, the same logic, the same anomaly will be applied onto the, the, the gene thing. So let's look into. For here, I would take up a, the, the you know, a US database that is NCBI. Now NCBI is National Center for Biotechnology Information. So as I was trying to tell you, there are two major types of databases. One is called as the public database and the other one is called as private domain database. Now public domain database wherein the data is available for public 24 into 7. Okay, any point of time the data is available for free. However, in a private domain database, the database, you know, there is maintenance and there's a charge for which your data is, has to be maintained or even if you want to manage or retrieve any kind of a data, you know, the database will charge you. So most of our videos or, you know, most of our efforts at Biotechnica have been focused towards how do I utilize the virtual freely available data, very importantly, the biological data, so that you can dwell upon, I can build upon, you know, these platforms so that I come with a conclusive, you know, data or a result. So with that, let us try to look into the demonstration. Now, as I told you, we are clicking on or we are looking into the world's biggest database uh, that is National Center for Biotechnology. When I look into it, so this is the, the homepage of National Library of Medicine that is National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI. Now, here you have an option as all databases. Now, when I say all databases, imagine I need to search for a protein. Now. I want to know a name of a protein. Can you please tell me very quickly what would be the name of a protein? Okay. Uh, for most of the students, at, when we do our internship, the first protein which comes into uh, their mind is the egg protein, which is albumin. Okay. Or the other protein is the hair protein, which is called as keratin. So I will take up an example of keratin here and then type in keratin. Now, as we have seen here, when I set up all databases and keratin, then the database will make sure that it will search for keratin in all kinds of databases. 
Now, this is not necessary for me because I am sitting here for a sequence analysis, then the entire focus has to be on sequences. So what I will do is rather than on all databases, I will go on to a drop down and select a very specific database which is called as protein because now I want to dwell upon protein. So I'll take up the protein and now remember the keratin is my keyword and protein is my database. So now it will not the word keratin is not searched in the entire database. It will be only searched in my protein database. So I'm making the database very, very stringent so that I am searching in the same compartment of the protein. Now the next question is I want to search keratin, but on the other way keratin is present in dog, cat, mouse, Okay, but which keratin are you looking for? So for the interest of the audience, let me take up keratin and humans. So keratin and homo sapiens. And then say enter. So keratin and homo sapiens is keratin comma homo sapiens is the uh, you know keyword and in the and is the conjunction word. Now, if you want to look upon what are exactly are conjunctions and how exactly a review of literature has to be done, you need to look into the previous video. I think the link has been actually provided in the link box below. So here I have keratin. Now, when I look into keratin, please make sure that when we when we sequence a protein with in wet lab studies using either Malditoff or any of the spectroscopic methods. Uh, so there you know either you can sequence an N terminal or you can sequence an C terminal or some partial sequence. So when you look upon a data you need to very very sure that what type of data you're looking at. Example if you look at keratin here so here it says keratin partial homo sapiens. This means to say we are talking about a keratin but however we are talking about a partial sequence of keratin and which is in homo sapiens that is humans. But what is the length of the sequence? The length of the sequence is 244 amino acids. So you need to decide, do you want to take that partial sequence? In most of the conditions, what we do is we take a complete sequence. Okay, so here the complete sequence for me is keratin, homo sapien. The next sequence is 472 amino acid. But look at this. You have another keratin. Again, Homo sapiens, but this is 505 amino acids. So the advantage is as the longer the sequence, I get more amount of data. So if any point of time, if there is no alignment in that particular data, I can still chop it out. But however, make sure you take the longest sequence to protein for your study. So here, rather than me taking the first or the second option, I would go upon the third option that is keratin on Homo sapiens with 505 amino acid residues. So I click on this. So when I click on this, there's a new window which would open up and this window is called as the default formats. Now, uh, uh, friends, we are trying to just move upon to look how exactly the sequences have been arranged. Remember, the sequence have been arranged in three different formats. The first format is called as genpept format. Okay, let me write it for you. The first format is called as the first format is called as genpet format. So it is gen pept format. Now, when I say gen pept format, gen refers to the gen bank and pept p e p e p t refers to peptide. So pept refers to peptide. So the first format is called as gen pept format. The second format is called as FASTA. The second format is called as FASTA format, which is called as FAST ALL. So this is called as FASTA format. And the third format is called as graphical format. So it is called as graphical format or graphics. So when I say graphical format, so this will give me a pictorial representation. Now in this video, for the, the, for the next few minutes, we will talk about how, what are the characteristic features of this particular formats because when you are trying to analyze sequences, either for alignment or homology, orthology, parology, any kind of uh, sequence alignment studies, you need to look upon the compatibility of the sequence with that particular tool. And hence, selecting a particular sequence becomes very, very important. Now, moving on further so that we see what are the sequences which are available. The, the on default, on default, when I click on keratin and homo sapiens and when I go into a protein database, on a default mode, you have the genpet format. Okay, so how do I know the format is on genpet? So if you look into the database onto the screen, so 
the 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 sequence in which the form you know the format in which the sequence has been actually represented will be at the top so if you see here you have gen peptide so here you have gen peptide now any point of time you change the sequence format that sequence format will come at the top and gen peptide will go at the bottom okay so right now let me try to make you understand the gen peptide format remember gen peptide format is a default format any point of time you open up a protein ncbi database you get it as a default format here now what does the or what does the format say this is a detailed html format so here you will have on what loci is your keratine gene which has been present what are the proteins which are adjacent to it and how many amino acids which are actually contributing for the structure of the protein what is the nature of the protein and the structural nat nature of the protein example whether it is a globular protein whether it's a linear protein that component we can look into here so it here it says this is the loci and this is the amino acid number so that is i have 505 amino acids and remember this is a linear chain and this was been deposited in the year 2016 that is 14th november 2006 okay so when i look into this it will give me the entire detail of which organism is this particular keratin isolated what is the the classification you know zoological classification and then who are the authors who are actually responsible to to elucidate the structure of keratin where did they publish okay and then which is the article now the next important component is this component now remember if by any chance if you are into the the computational part if you are into the it part wherein you are trying to link the 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 data the biological data with your coding component this is a component which will actually help you now for a biologist the output of this the the data which has been highlighted is uh, is very minimal because here we many a times biologists have been said as the blind users of the data which has been available so we are called as the illiterate users of a uh, database we 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 know how to extract my biological information but we don't know what exactly is happening uh, onto the computer at a background so uh, it's an humble request that i i urge uh, the bioinformatician you know the bi uh, biologist to learn informatics and the informaticians to learn biology so that once we come together that concreteness of bioinformatics would actually boom up moving ahead so this is the, at the end you have the sequence of keratin now, as I told you, you have this entire sequence of keratin here. I'm sorry. Okay, so this entire sequence of keratin is available here. So once I the sequence is available, so this is with numbers. So it would be arranged in a form of rows and tables, rows and columns. And rows and columns together will form table. Now, this is according to a particular rule, which is called as quad rule. Okay, this rule is called as quad rule. So it is c-o-d-d -D rule i want you people to go and read about quad rules okay so quad rules are the set of rules which will define how exactly a data has to be deposited how has uh, the data has to be retrieved and managed on a database now according to edgar cord he says that any kind of a data if it has to be deposited on a database it has to be arranged in a form of rows and columns but the rows and columns together will be called as a table so here again if you look into the arrangement the arrangement is the form is in the form of rows and it is in the form of rows and columns and the first line would start at one end at a number here the number is not indicated but however the next line starts with 61 this gives me an idea the last in the first line the last amino acid is nothing but the amino acid number 60 so this amino acid is amino acid number 60 and this amino acid is amino acid number one in the same way this amino acid is the 61st amino acid and the f at the end is 120th amino acid this is how the entire amino acid would run upon and at the last you have these five amino acid these five amino acids are into an incomplete catapule okay and then you know uh, uh you have 481 so plus 10 plus 10 that will be around 500 plus 5 is 505 this is the entire length of your keratin so this is a format which is the first format which is called a gen pet format now moving ahead we have the second format which is called as faster now if i go on to the top i have an option here as faster so i will select on faster 
So the moment I select on faster, Genpept, as I was trying to tell you, Genpept has gone somewhere over here at the bottom. And here at the top, the display, the current page has been displaying a faster sequence. Now, what is faster? Faster is a fast all sequence or a format, which will make the entire analysis much more faster. Now, as we have discussed, a, a characteristic feature of a faster format is it has a greater symbol followed by its accession number than a in the name of the protein and then the the organism and then you have the the sequence now what is the difference between a faster format and a genpet format so if you remember the genpet format in genpet format you had the numbers over there like 161 121 something like that but however here you do not find numbers so, so here there it was a discontinuous uh, sequence here it is a continuous sequence so this is a major you know difference between uh, you know the uh, the genpet sequence and the faster sequence however there are many more differences but uh, in the interest of time i'm trying to tell you just the major differences okay so uh, so this is this is uh, the faster format and an uh, important thing to be remembered is most of the tools uh, when we go for sequence alignment most of the tools are actually they are compatible with the uh, with the faster sequence rather than the genpet sequence so the next and the last format of the sequence is called as the graphics or we call it as graphical format. So hence now the graphics is at the top. And as I was trying to tell you, when I talk about graphics, so it is not giving you an idea of the amino acids which have been arranged, but it will try to illustrate a complete pictorial representation with a ruler. So this is a ruler or this is a scale which talks about 505 amino acids and how are these amino acids positioned? So this is an this is a protein which is an entire keratin and as we know keratin is a filamentous protein it's a linear protein and this says that though you have a sequence from 1 to 505 but there are only few sequences which are actually contributing to the structure of keratin now if you look into the uh, onto the screen so it this says that i have a this this says here Okay, I have a sequence and this sequence will be somewhere around 412. So from 412, from 412, you have the sequence which is one fragment which is making keratin to keratin. The other component are still there but however they are not into the conserved domain of keratin and looking at this which will help me in defining whether the keratin is as an entire keratin it is you know active or there are certain conserved domains and there are non-conserved domains. Please remember, if I am trying to do certain mutational studies and if I change the conserved domain, it will change the entire nature of keratin. But however, certain non-conserved domains, it will allow me to actually play around it even without changing the nature of that particular protein. This is common for most of the proteins. So, uh, what we have learned from this graphical format is it will give me a pictorial representation. Faster format will help me, in, you know, in easily accessing a continuous sequence and genpet format will help me in understanding the entire uh, HTML format of where exactly the work was done, uh, where exactly is the loci, how exactly it has been arranged in the form of a row and table. All these things will be helpful in genpet format. So this was uh, uh, just an attempt to give you an idea of various uh, formats of sequences which have been available on protein. Now, if you want to apply the same logic onto nucleic acid very quickly, we will just look into it. Now, because I am on a protein database, very quickly we need to change it into nucleotide. So I will select as nucleotide. So then again with the nucleotide, I am still taking up a protein as uh, uh, the name, the keyword which is called as keratin. Now, when I say keratin, Remember, I am not looking for a protein keratin sequence. I am looking at the, the gene which is responsible to produce the protein which is called as keratin. So when I go on to search, so this gives me, this gives me uh, information on how exactly a nucleic acid will be coded. So this is keratin here and then let me take up the gene or the nucleotide so i have selected nucleotide then let me go back to keratin okay and then i say homo sapiens let me take this example very quickly and then i say search 
okay this is giving me the nucleotide sequence now very quickly for the sake of our time if i just click on this i am clicking on a very small sequence okay which is just 922 base pair link and now when you go back okay you have this as the entire sequence of the nucleotide of the nucleotide of keratin okay you will also get the protein which is uh, here however you can also look into various formats as we have done with the protein database as uh, the faster format of uh, the keratin nucleotide or i can go into the graphical format also so like this i can go into the graphical format and then look into how exactly is the pictorial representation of the keratin gene has been arranged and maybe in next few videos we will also talk upon okay how exactly i can identify a promoter region and in most of our internships uh, uh, students they ask about identification of uh, orfs that is you know open reading frames in a given sequence how do i identify a tata box where can i do a mutation where do i do a point mutation where do i do an snp how, how do i uh, identify an snp all this uh, normally what we do is we actually conduct a lot of internships in this internships a in detailed study and discussion will happen on biotechnica okay so any point of time uh, if you require any kind of assistance please do not forget to uh, call us on our toll free numbers and please do not forget to leave a feedback on how did you like this particular video and many a times if you if you request a particular uh, and caption a particular title uh, as per your requirement so we are always open at biotechnica to help you out because we believe that your success is our motivation so thank you very much for joining us so see you in the next video all the very best